Good evening. Um, tonight we're going to take a look at a couple of different kinds of plays. Um, the first one we're going to look at is the Duplirin and the Mutirin. Um, I know I've got a video up on YouTube, but I still see people doing some really sloppy things around on the internet. I thought this would be a good chance to go over that and explain it. Now, the masters tell us that when you do the Duplirin, you must do it when he is hard in the body. And when you do the Mutirin, it's because he's soft in the body. But they give us very little instruction about how these techniques are supposed to work. The only clue we really have is that, that they say, you clear him when he's hard in the body and you tear him when he's soft. But that actually tells us a tremendous amount of information. And what it tells us is that when you're doing the Duplirin, you should not expect to push into his sword, and certainly not to move his sword, but that you can certainly expect to push his sword, or at least push into his sword, when you do the Mutirin. And that in itself really defines the characteristics of what we're doing. So here's the thing about the Duplirin. It is a binder. Okay? Now, when you come into a bind, if my opponent binds me over to the side, right? when he binds me over to the side, I'm not going to do a binding from here because I have to get him back over where I want him to be. Okay? That's a good place for a schnapp. Since the Duplerin is a binding, although it is a binding with a cut, right? Remember there are 24 binding because there are eight with the thrust, eight with the cut, and eight with the slice, right? So that tells me that the Duplerin is done from a straight bond. I want you to understand the process I go through to figure out how these things should be interpreted. So in this case, we, we bind straight, okay? but my opponent is hard in the bind. Now, when that is the case, the master tells us to take the palm of the sword and push it under your arm, all right? And then cut him diagonally through the mouth. Now, there's a couple of things hidden in that. The first is, rather obviously, it's gonna be a diagonal cut. But the second is that I'm moving the sword around his sword. And I remember many years ago, I went to a seminar where an instructor who shall not be named, because just about everything he says is wrong, talked about the Duplerin, but he said that you should do it as if you're cutting, it should feel to your opponent as if you cut him right through his sword. And that was actually a very insightful comment that taught me a lot about this. So when you do this action, the first thing you do is push your sword. Remember, you follow the blow, so the sword moves first, and then you cut across. Now, how does the cut work? Well, almost all the cuts that we do are done with a push-pull motion of the hands. So it is with this. The push underneath isn't really the cut. The push underneath is what gets you on that side of his blade. But that certainly starts the push-pull motion. Okay, that's how it begins. So when I do the Duplirin, that's it. Now, Things people do wrong, because that's such a simple action, how could you mess it up? You guys have a lot of talent. One of the things people do is they think it's got to come around in a circle. So they do this. They bring the point back and then cut in. If you have practiced on the Pell, learning to cut with a push-pull motion in your hands, you don't need to do that, okay? The motion under here gives you a, a good impetus, then you've got to pull back with that left hand, right? So if you watch me do it, my point doesn't come back much. It probably is a little bit, but I'm not making the big loop that everybody makes. So from here to here, okay? My sword does not make a big loop around. It just lays over and then cuts. Now, remember that the masters don't discuss footwork in relation to this technique at all. That is not the same thing as saying there is no footwork, okay? However, as I've worked through this play, I have come to believe there must be footwork. And let me show you why I believe that. If I do this technique to here, right, absolutely nothing comes between me, my delicate person, and my opponent's evil intentions. And yeah, maybe it's a double kill, but it's so fast, he might just punch through and not think, oh my God, I've got to defend myself. But when I add the element of footwork in, okay, First of all, 
there's a little pressure on his sword. And when you push on somebody's weapon, what do they do? They push back just a little bit. And I'm going to come back to that because it sounds like I said push his sword over and I didn't. But I'm maintaining contact. So I want to stay am schwer the whole way through this technique. Okay? And as I do this, I'm pushing in. Okay? So I'm not going sideways and just cutting across. I'm actually pushing in a little bit like this as I do the cut. I'm pushing my right arm forward as I pull back on this hand. Okay? One of the things that does is puts my cross here. Now if he just drops his sword, my cross catches it, right? So watch, this time a Joe's going to move his sword down as if he's going to hit me on my head. You see that? My cross protects me. Make your sword your shield. That's what I'm doing here. So understand that that is where I get the notion of adding footwork. You might say, but then it's too slow. False. If you follow the blow, if you remember to let your hands lead and your feet follow, then the footwork actually happens after the duplirin, okay? Not, not literally, it happens as. But it shouldn't add to the time to do the duplirin, right? My hands are still going directly from the bind into the cut, and my step is after that. It's incidental, so it doesn't add to the time. It doesn't make the technique slower, if that makes sense. The last thing is, what a lot of people do, and I said you push into the sword. You don't truly push into the sword, but you remain armstrong. But you do see people do this all the time. They think they've got to come down like this. And when you do that, first of all, you're fighting strength with strength. Secondly, you're, you're, um, uh, you're giving him an opportunity to just push it right out of the way. Okay. The idea, the real idea here is to go behind his sword so that he should feel that you're in the bind. He should feel your sword on his pressing against it so he doesn't want to leave. But he should not feel any pressure, okay? And if somebody were to stand behind us and hold the point of Joe's sword, I could do my duplirin exactly the same way I would just without it, without it being attached to anything. So you don't want to push it over. Now there are two ways people push it over. The first I just mentioned, they do this, and then try and come in, and of course, that requires you to leave the bind, right? Because once you push it over and come back, you have to leave the bind. But the second thing that they do is when they go to here and they step across, they bring their arms with them. See how my hands went with my body? To push the sword over. But if you watch how I really do it, my hands stay where they are and my body moves so that I, as I do the technique, my arms are stretched way out as I do it. I'm leaving the arms, I'm leaving my hands, I should say. I'm leaving my hands where they were and cutting behind his sword. Just like so, watch again. Okay. As a result, I'm not pushing him over in any way, I'm not fighting his strength, I'm going around his weapon, right? Let's watch that from the other side. Okay, just that simple. Let's give that a go. Okay, so in the last video we talked about the duplirin. In this video we're going to talk about the mutarin. Before we do that though, I want to talk about one thing about the duplirin that I saw as we were going through the practice that you need to focus on. And that has to do with where you put your, how you move your left hand across. So what I was seeing when people were doing the duplirin was they were moving the right hand across right under the right, I'm sorry, the left hand across right in front of the left forearm. So from here, they were coming to here. Then the only way they could hit their opponent was pushing with the right hand. And that's not how we cut. When you take your right, your left hand underneath, you want to make it go down and forward because that is where your cut comes from. Remember, all our cuts are a push-pull motion. So when we bind, I push down like this. I don't pull my point back. I push my pommel down. You see the difference? I didn't pull back to here. I pushed down to here. Then I just unwind it with a chop, and that's where my push-pull of the cut comes in. See that? 
Watch where my left hand goes. See how effective that is? Really works. Let's watch it once on the other side. Watch how far my left hand goes across. See it? Very powerful cut, very effective. Well, not super powerful, but way more than it would be if you're just pushing with your right hand. Okay. Now the meat turn. We're actually reshooting this because as I went through and watched everybody doing it, I realized that there were a lot of subjects I didn't talk about that I should have. But the thing about the Muturin is this. It is the simplest hard technique out there, apparently. People try and overcomplicate this. If you go look on YouTube of people doing this technique, none of them even vaguely look like the description in the book. And I think it's because they don't understand what it's supposed to do. Right? So we know that when you come into this, you do it in a soft bind. Well, what defines a soft bind? A soft bind means that your opponent isn't holding hard. Remember, a hard bind doesn't mean we're pushing. It just means I'm set solidly. So that if he does push, he can't really move my sword very easily. If I push into him, if he's hard in the bind, I would have to use a lot of power and force. So the definition of a soft bind is I can push him easily. And normally when that happens is when he's thinking about doing something else afterwards. So when you come into this bind, you feel he's soft in the bind, right? Now remember, when we cut, my point should be here, right? Back behind his head. All you're going to do is move your point across that much, right? I just have to clear the line of his body. But what I was seeing people doing is they were pushing across like this, and then they would catch their crosses on their opponent's sword. You need... <coughs> <coughs> You need a certain angle of incidence. Now, this is a gross exaggeration, obviously. You wouldn't go this far. But you need a certain degree of angle of incidence so you don't catch your pommel or your cross as you lift it around. So from here, you're just going to push across to here. Now all you're going to do is drop your point. All right? See that? I'm just taking my right hand, as I was, my left hand, kicking it up, and that's my thrust. Okay? And I'm aiming for the outside lower quarter. So down in here, remember the masters break us into four parts? You're aiming at the outside lower one. Okay? Now, one of the things I see that people do wrong with this is they make it too big. Okay? Joe should schnapp me right in the middle of that. Right? It's, you're, you're, you're making this huge wide open. If you do the muturin correctly, he can't do it. See how subtle and small a movement it is? Right? It's just that easy. Now watch that again in slow motion. So I bind, and I move my point across. I can either push my right, my left hand this way or my right hand this way. It sort of doesn't matter. But I need to create an angle of instance against his sword so I don't catch my cross on it. And I need my point to be outside his sword, uh, outside his head, so I can drop down without catching him, right? Those are the two things I don't want to trap. And when I do it, what I don't want to do is pick my hands way up. Right? Because now I'm screwed. All I want to do is drop my point right over it. You see that? So even if he picks his hands up, he's going to catch. You follow me? So don't pick your hands up in the air. Just drop your point, pick your left hand up. So it's this to this. That's all there is to the meteor. Let's give that a go.